we greet everybody with the peace of the Lord. And invite the church to stand up at this time. We're gonna open our Bibles. The prophet Ezekiel. Uh, chapter 33. Ezekiel 33. Uh, from verse 1. can find it's a little harder Ezekiel Malachi it's a little hard to find amen Ezekiel uh, 33 verse 1 says the following again the word of the Lord came to me saying son of man speak to the children of your people and say to them when I bring the sword up on the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming up on the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take the warning, if the sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head. When he heard the sound of the trumpet, but he did not take warning, his blood shall be upon himself. But who takes but he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned that the sword comes and, and takes many lives among them, he is taken away from his in iniquity. And his blood I'll require in the watch of the, um, the watchman hand. Verse 32, 33. Indeed, you are, you are to me as very lovely song as, as who has pleasant voice and, and, and can play well an instrument. For they hear your words and they're not do then. And when this comes to pass, surely it will come. When they, when they will know that the prophet has, has been among them. The brothers may be seated. My brothers, we have this um, few weeks left. A direction from the Lord. It's a direction from the Holy Spirit. We've been talking a lot about the warnings. The warnings from the Lord. Their spiritual holies. And the Lord, He brings it up, His servant, to be the watchman. The Lord Jesus, He brings up in the middle of the church and He takes out from the middle of the world the one who met Jesus, the one that from love to God. In love through the salvation of Jesus. And then he's now here at the house of the Lord. And here he becomes the player of the trumpet. And he becomes a prophet. What's a prophet? Let's go. What's a prophet? What's a prophecy? What's a prophet? Who knows? Uh, who knows what's a prophet? Nobody? Yeah, that's it. The one that tells, the one that warns, and the ones that tells the words of the Lord. What's the prophecy? Huh? You can say, don't worry. Don't worry if you're wrong. Is the orientation, right? The orientation of the Lord. The prophecy is what talks about the future. The prophecy is what is in the mind of the Lord. And that the Lord is preparing to man for our lives. 
Every time that Jesus, he wants or wanted or want to communicate himself with men, he uses the prophet. He always used the prophet. Why? Because what Jesus wants when he uses the prophet to, to show the prophecy is to save men. It is to take men out of the judgment of death, eternal death. God will never, never, has never done anything to men before the man has been warned. Since the beginning, since the first time that Jesus created man, Adam, the, man, uh, the Lord said, and the, the Lord said, Adam, look, this is everything here. You can do whatever you want. But this tree right here, this and that, don't touch it, don't eat it. This one right here, this and that, you cannot do the Bible, we see it many times that the Bible of Aiden was just a couple of verses. But he was warned. God, he prepared to eat him. Adam. God never, never did anything to man without he being warned. That throughout the history of man, throughout the biblical history. We can stay here all night talking about Abraham and Moses, about all the all the things in Egypt, all the warnings from the Lord. Everything that man tells, everything that the Lord tells men, it is to preserve their lives. Everything that the Lord tells, it is for God. And the Bible says, their path in the world. That looks like to be good, looks good, but the path that takes you to death, but the path from God, whatever comes from the Lord, it is for eternal life. The Lord here now, he uses the prophet Ezekiel to talk to people. Ezekiel, he was a prophet that was raised in the time of uh, Daniel, same time was when the people, they were under the judgment of the Lord. The people, they were already captive. They were already, they were already at the place in Babylon. And they didn't know, uh, they didn't know if they should listen to the Lord or not listen to the Lord, do things from the Lord or not. So, um, the Lord now allows Israel to go uh, be, being taken captive. So now in Babylonia, inside of the palace, uh, in Nebuchadnezzar. So Ezekiel, now at the same uh, time period of Daniel, Daniel, but he, but he served away inside of the palace. Daniel was prepared by the Lord. He was taken when young. He was prepared to be a, 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 a person from Babylonia to serve the king. He was trained to serve another king. How to how to be in front of another king. He learned how to he learned how to speak another language. But Daniel, he stayed. Uh, faithful to the Lord as a prophet from the Lord and he said many times what it was from the Lord Daniel said and Daniel he he stated himself as a servant of the Lord as a new creature blessed and clean from the Lord even before the Lord died Daniel he already gave testimonies as a life that was uh, ready with the Lord, even though he was seeing everything bad going on with his people, his parents, his nation, when he saw his nation being captive, a youth that was, that was raised inside of the palace, saying that the, the Lord of Israel is the true God himself, but now this youth see his nation 
broken down his natives uh, his native people being taken captive and many people that he knew from Israel they died but throughout his history he never lost his faith Daniel never turned back to the Lord even though after all the accusations oh you cannot do that Daniel he prayed to the Lord it didn't matter what it was it didn't matter what the, the Lord was saying the, what the king was saying when they needed Daniel to talk about the Lord the Lord was uh, Daniel was there Daniel was there but why? because Daniel he was an instrument in the hands of the Lord now Ezekiah at the same time he prophesied um, he was talking about the Lord to who? to the people uh, and he said the son of man talk about God to your people and he was talking he was telling people the people outside of the palace that the people was the same people the prophecies that was the word from the Lord it had the same power and it had the same meaning that was to deliver the people of the Lord it was to deliver people from death from the judgment and the word right here says and when it comes the sword over the land and the trumpets played warn the people Here, Zechariah, he's talking about who? Who's the sword? The word is Jesus. Whatever comes from God. Warn the people. He said that those who don't listen to the play of the trumpet, and those who listen to the play of the trumpet, and don't uh, notice, the blood will be upon him. The people of the church, it is this, we live in a moment where the sword of the Lord is already on top of this world. The sword of the Lord is here, giving, uh, guiding the church, guiding not only a nation, but also a people, the world, that Jesus will come. Today the church, it is the Atalaya. Today the church of the Lord, it should, um, it should make himself look like Atalaya. It should, uh, it should take whatever comes from the Lord and become a teller. A teller about the, about the word of the Lord. Because the world is there, the ups and downs, the world that we see, that we live in, but that we are not part of it, and that we cannot be part of it, it's over there. His way, the way of leaving, ignoring everything that's from the Lord, ignoring the, the sound of the trumpet. Playing the trumpet and the signs of the Lord is there. Once the Lord, the men listen or not, but the signs of the Lord it is already up on this world. And now the verse 32 and 33 says, "Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they to hear your words." But do they not do them? So the Lord is telling the same way that through the prophet Ezekiel in this chapter, he's, he's talking about what's happening out there in the world, that the world is ignoring of what is the saying of the Lord. But my brothers, we as a church, we that are here listening to the sound of the trumpet, we that are here every day, listening to the speak of the Lord we cannot fall in the same mistake of the world the church of the Lord needs to give value to whatever the Lord is doing you the servant of the Lord you need to give value 
the word of the Lord in your life. You know why? Because you're going to commit the same error, the same mistake of many. As you are today, as a lovely song. Zechariah said to the Lord, Lord, these people don't listen to me. They listen to my voice. They listen to the prophecies. Right? Everything good. It is a song of love. Who doesn't like to come in a service? Who doesn't like to come to church? It is really good to come to church. It is a lovely song. It is just like it is a song for you to sleep. You come here after a day, a really tiring day, with so many struggles. You come here, it's a peace, it's a joy. The Holy Spirit is present, visiting all the hearts. And then later on, later on uh, the servant says, Hallelujah, thank the Lord, and the, the kids sing. It's a blessing. Everything is really good. It's way better than you being out there in the craziness of every day. There's nothing better than you to come here in the service. You sit down, you pray to the Lord. You say, Oh Lord, this is my life. I plead for the power of the name of the blood of Jesus. I ask for forgiveness. This is it. For many, the coming to the service, it is just like that. It is just like a lovely song. Of someone that has a good, of someone that has a good song, a smooth voice. For many, I love this. But being in the presence of the Lord is this. You are in a church. You have no tasks. Not even money you lose here. Imagine you have everything. This is heaven for many. There's, here there's, we don't even talk about money. What do you need more? You come here, you listen to a, a, a word, you receive a prayer, you go to your house, more blessing. Tomorrow's another day. For many, to be in the presence of the Lord, it is just like this. The person leaves here. Amazed, but why? Because the operation of the Holy Spirit does that. It doesn't matter if you want to or not. The Holy Spirit is actually operating. We have a group of people here. Wait, not everybody wants a blessing from the Lord, but most of them want. And when the Bible and the Bible says, when there is one or two more in my name, I'll be there. So you can be here totally by yourself here. But the Holy Spirit is present. The Lord is operating in lives. The Lord is delivering souls. He's curing infirmities. He's saving souls. But sadly, for many, the, the tax continues. Because they listen to His word, but it doesn't do them. So not everybody that they're here, they're listening, they're actually listening. Because not even everybody that's here with their Bible, they're coming in here playing songs. They're putting in practice what it has been the prophecy of the Lord. Not everybody. It's the reality. Not only this moment. You know what? Because the man has something called free, free will. The Lord doesn't force the man to listen to his voice. The man, the Lord doesn't force men to listen to, to all things that he's saying. The Lord doesn't look at man and say, oh, you're going to have to go there, you have to, you're going to have to be there, you're going to have to accept my son as a savior. No, the Lord doesn't do that. And the man doesn't do also. The man comes because he loves and because the Holy Spirit gets in his heart. But now, if you haven't got if you haven't heard the words of the Lord in your life, if you haven't got the, the words of the Lord in your life, just like how it should be, it's a new way of life. So you're probably ignoring everything that the Lord has done in your life. You're simply saying, 
the Lord is here, I'm there, whenever I need, I'm here. Many does that. In the middle of this operation of the Holy Spirit, in the middle of this uh, hurry that the Holy Spirit has to take men out of the sin, of rescuing the life of men, many you hear inside the churches, leaving just like the Lord doesn't exist. I must say one thing. The man, in his life, he can, he can actually have the audacity to do in many things. You can, it's okay if you have a lack of a husband, if you don't have your parents, if you don't have your children, if you don't have a job, if you don't have health. Okay, if you don't have anything in the physical, many, but in the soul, you, can, you cannot be missing the Lord. The Lord needs to be present in the life of man. The Holy Spirit needs to be present in the life of man. Because if not, there's, there's no meaning. The man needs to be inside of the Lord, listening to the voice of the Lord, listening to the messages, even though if it's a simple or a very elaborate. So if he doesn't have the Holy Spirit in his heart, transforming his life, operating the newborn, operating a new transformation, not only in the mind but also in the heart, there's that's for nothing because he's gonna be thinking everything. You all for them, just like Ezekiel said. Oh, you all for them as this lovely song of someone that has a smooth voice and who sings well. And the Lord is talking right here. See you, Ezekiel. But he's talking exactly to Jesus. My brothers, there's nothing better than listening to the voice of the Lord, the voice of Jesus. Because the voice of the Lord is, is calm and sweet. Because he's a good shepherd. And we won't need anything. Because the Lord is the one that has for us all that we need. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter our condition. Every time that the Lord needs and turns up to the Lord, the man will find an answer. It doesn't matter our position yesterday or this morning. If you come here today and pray to the Lord with for help, the Lord will stand in your hand. Because the Lord is this for men. I, he always wants to be the option for men. The one that plays good. If you heard an instrumentalist when he plays, the guitar even starts to speak. If you speak the words, you can listen. Oh, what a blessing. I feel amazed when someone knows how to play. It is beautiful. When you are in the presence of the Lord, there's nothing better. But look, don't do what many does. What the Lord is saying, His words, the prophecy that's there. It is to take out our soul. It is to give us a device and take us to eternity with the Lord. So put these words, put the doctrine, put everything that comes from the Lord in your life and live the life. Live the word. The Bible. It wasn't left for us only to be a little book. The gospel can not only be a theory. The gospel, the Bible, can not only be a little theory that we read, we know, but we don't live this. The Lord gave a vision that there was a man, a person. Oh, there was a man. 
He came to a path and then he was walking inside of the spot. And when he realized, he found himself inside of the labyrinth. But he was far away from the entrance. And then he started seeking and trying to look for the entrance. And when he walked the most, he was getting even lost. So the man who is far from the Lord, or that is with the Lord, but not listening to the advices from the Lord, just like if he's in a labyrinth, lost. And he gets crazy trying to find a way out. Oh, is it here? Is it there? You know, once more you seek, once more you try to find, and you get more anxious, you get more concerned because you don't know the way. And, and the person that knows the labyrinth, they need to know all the paths. You cannot only get there. No, they, they get lost. The labyrinth, you need to know so you can walk. And the gospel is the same way. If you only know the theory, but you don't put in the practice, in your life you're going to lose, you're going to get lost. And that's what the Lord wants to talk to us. And because the Lord doesn't want us to fall in the same mistake that many did. That is to be here physically, but far away from the Lord. And brothers and Jesus we can have all things that we need but the salvation is for men the only and the only way that the men can get to the cross and get to the light but needs to be lived here but the salvation needs to be lived here because there in the heaven you're already going to be saved the salvation takes you here while you're here to escape from the judgment of death because you're in heaven you're going to be saved already and the salvation needs to be sick from the Lord and lived by the Lord by the man so when this happens, they will know that there is a prophet among us. So, we don't want to fall in this situation of the mistake is that the church left, that the church they left, and with them, the whole spirit left, and they say, oh damn, I lost my blessing. I didn't lose. I, I didn't hear the prophet. I didn't listen to the prophecy, and, and now I didn't put the word of the Lord in my heart. And sadly, this word, this is gonna happen to many. You're living a life just like they want to live their lives, ignoring the, the voice of the Lord, not listening to the. The advice of the Holy Spirit, Amen. That this word could actually touch many hearts. And that we could take a position upon the Lord. A position where we can make us more, more and more to be in the presence of the Lord. That we could give value in value what the Lord has given us in value what the Lord wants to give us more that we could put in our lives in practice everything that are the good the good uh, advice from the Lord because the prophecy we are the prophets because we are the result of the prophecy you that came here tonight you you are a son of the prophet. Why? Because the church, it is the son of the prophet. You the king, you were the, the result of a prophecy. And we are prophets. We are the sons of prophets. Under us, it is his mission of announce the coming back of Jesus. We are watchmen.
para falarmos do Senhor and to talk about the Lord we need to give testimony of what is our creation of the Holy Spirit in our lives that the Lord could bless us let's sing a song Stand up at this time. Let's listen to the, uh, the gifts. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Oh Lord, we thank you. We glorify you for this word. How good it is for you to come and talk to us. We glorify you, Lord, because there's no other place than being with you, oh Lord. We thank you because truly we don't even have words enough to thank you for the things that you have done and we know that we don't deserve it because you're the one that loves us you're the one that gives us the advice for our lives because you love us That's why I would thank you for this word, a wonderful word. We thank you because we are your house, listening to the all the devices. There is a device from you, the Lord. That's why we thank you, and we adore you, and say thank you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Little five in the name of the Lord.
Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. My brothers, the benefit that is to be right next to Jesus, the benefit of being in fellowship with the Lord, it is, it is this, this environment. It is this moment, this wonderful moment, where we leave this place with, um, with strength and alive and cured. The Lord showed that there was a lady that came here today. She has for a, a couple of weeks. She's being really worried with a, with a, a little thing that she had in her breast. And this has been something that uh, she's worried about. But tonight the Lord says, You have been touched. Amen. You can relax in the Lord because the voice of the Lord is the voice of the trumpets. It is just like the voice of many waters. And when he says his victory, when he sets his victory, the victory is set. There's no sickness, there's no sin, there's nothing that can speak louder than our God. So you can tonight just rest in the Lord and glorify his name. Let's have another word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we adore you and we thank you for the beauty of your word. It is also because of our happiness. It is a so near karma. We thank you because your grace is enough. We see you, Lord. And we thank you because truly you are everything for us. And we thank you for this work, this work of your Holy Spirit. Oh, the Lord, we tell you and we ask you and we thank you because you are God. And we thank you because if God is with us, who will be against us? We thank you because soon right now that we come. And we thank you for this life and for tonight, this night of feast. Lord Jesus, amen. And brothers, the servant of the Lord, he doesn't live based on luck. The servant of the Lord, he doesn't live based on counting on the help of man or the government. No, the, the faithful servant of the Lord, he, he depends on the miracle of the Lord. And that's what we are here doing because we depend on the dependent of the miracle. This is from the miracle from the Lord that we are here tonight glorifying to him. That's why we are here. That's why we came back to the house of the Lord. Because there is no other place than being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Lord to Jesus. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, tonight we want to thank your holy name for this spiritual feast. We want to thank you, Lord, because one day you called us to live in the salvation. And we are, Lord, privileged of being chosen by you. We glorify because we chose to serve you. We chose the best portion that is to be under your powerful hands. And we say, O oh Lord, because until now you have helped us. We thank you for the cures, your operations and miracles, and for the strength given in our lives tonight. And now we say, receive our songs, receive our adoration, gratitude. This is a prayer we do. In the name of Jesus, Amen. In your name we say that the holy grace of our God, the eternal Father, and sweet eternal consolations and the power of creation of the Holy Spirit could be upon, upon us now and forevermore. Amen. And the brothers may be seated. Meaning that tomorrow we're going to have a special service 
right. we're gonna participation with the children. We're gonna have a, a class revealed by the Lord toward especially especially for the kids and all the church invited because this is an event for the kids and that's why we're gonna be here to participate in this event with the kids. All of our help, all of our support, all of our prayers, because this is our children. And we glorify the Lord for them to be in the presence of the Lord. And now, all the church tomorrow at night at uh, 10.30 are invited to be here. Tomorrow night at 7.30, there's a service of evangelization. So let's be praying and ask uh, Audacity to actually go out and and tell about the, the word of the Lord uh, to be the watchman and hear the trumpet and hear the voice of the Lord. So we say, praise the Lord to everyone.